Okay, in this video we've got two particles A and B with mass 5 kilos and 10 kilos respectively. They're connected by a light and extensible string over a smooth pulley. The particles are initially at rest and held at the same level, 8 meters above the ground. Okay, let's draw a diagram so we can see what's going on. Pulley, two particles. There's our first one. There's our second one. Okay, so here's A and here's B. Now, uh, we know that particle A has mass 5 kilos, so it's got weight 5g, and B has weight uh, 10g. There will be the tension in the string, and because this one is heavier, the acceleration will be going in that direction. Okay, and the particles are 30, uh, sorry, 8 metres above the ground. So, i am drawing that, there we are, yeah, just about 8 metres. Okay, so this is the situation that we have. We were first asked to find the tension in the string and the acceleration of the system. Okay, so let's look at particle A and we're going to resolve taking upwards as positive. So we've got the tension working upwards, we've got 5g working downwards, and we've got the mass times acceleration, so 5a. Then if we take the second uh, particle, particle b, and we resolve downwards, then we've got 10g take away t is equal to the mass times acceleration. So here's equation 1, here's equation 2. So if we add those two equations together, we can knock out the t's. So 1 plus 2. We're going to get 10g take away 5g, so 5g. 5a plus 10a is 15a. OK, so that means that a, if I take g as 9.8, 5 lots of 9.8 divided by 15 gets me 49 fifteenths. Uh, which is uh, approximately 3.3 meters per second per second. Okay, so that's the acceleration of the system. Right, now I can work out the tension. So the tension, uh, if I substitute into equation 1, is equal to 5g plus 5 lots of a, which is 49 over 15. So 49 over 15 times by 5. Uh, add on the 5 lots of g, gets me 196 over 3, which is approximately 65 newtons. Okay, so that's my acceleration and my tension. Okay, now the time at which the particles are precisely 2 metres apart. Now, in order for that to happen, what must have happened is that particle A must have travelled up one metre and particle B must have travelled down one metre in order for them to be two metres apart. OK? So, what we can do is if we set up a SUVAT equation here, SUVAT problem, then I want the displacement of a particle to be just one. The initial speed to be zero. I don't know the final velocity. I know the acceleration is 49 over 15. And I want the time. So I want the equation that doesn't have V, which is S, uh, the third equation there. Okay. So we've got 1 equals U times T, so 0 times T, so 0, plus 1 half times A. So 1 half times 49 over 15, which is going to be 49 over 30. So 49 over 30 T squared. So if I divide 1 by 49 over 30, I get 30 over 49, square root that, and I get root 30 over 7, which is approximately 0.78 seconds. Okay, so 0.78 seconds to two significant figures. Okay, so that is the time at which the two particles are precisely two metres apart. Okay, right. So, let's give myself a little bit of space. Right. So, the last question. 
the greatest height reached by particle A, stating the assumption you have made to answer this question. Right, so um, what I'll actually do is I'll give myself a little bit more space by erasing this bit, OK? So I'll just give myself that space. Right, now, particle A is going to shoot upwards because it's being pulled upwards by the fact that B is going downwards. Now, when B hits the ground, OK, so when B travels 8 metres down, A will have travelled 8 metres up, OK? Now, at this point when B hits the ground, OK, so here's your particle A, OK? So let's be put the side on. The moment that it hits, that particle B hits the ground, particle A, the, the string, will go slack, OK? It, won't, it will no longer be taut. So particle A will rise up under its own momentum. And at that point, it, the only thing that's pulling it down is gravity. And it will reach a maximum height and then start to drop. OK, so that's the situation that we have. And that because we've got two different accelerations there, the acceleration that it's making at the 3.3 metres per second per second until particle B hits the ground, and then um, the acceleration will be minus 9.8 because it's just going to be under gravity, that means we're going to have to have two separate SUVAT situations, OK, in order to work this out. OK, so... First of all, the first set of SUVAT then. The initial speed we know is zero. Okay? We need A to have travelled eight metres. We don't know the final velocity. We know the acceleration is 49 over 15. Okay? We don't know the time. So, what do we actually want to know? Well... What would be useful to know is the velocity, certainly, OK? If we need to know the velocity that, um, that we're leaving there, OK, so that when we get to our second set of SUVA, OK, this initial velocity here will be the final velocity at that point. Okay, when we transfer over to our second set of SUVAT equations, where the acceleration will be minus 9.8, and I'm going to be wanting to find S. Okay, so that's the idea. The final velocity, right, for that point, for the second portion, will be, and it's going to hit zero. Okay, it's going to reach the maximum point, and that final velocity is going to be zero. So if I know that, that's me finding that, and then I can work out the S, which I really want to find, OK? So let's find that velocity. So we want the equation that doesn't have T in it, which is the fifth one. So V squared is equal to U squared, which is 0, plus 2 lots of A times S, OK? So 2 times 49 over 15 times by 8 is 784 over 15. So square root that, and I get v is 28 root 15 over 15, which is approximately 7.2 metres per second per second. OK? So that is the final velocity at the point when b hits the ground. So this will be the initial velocity down here, OK, when we're in free fall, effectively. Right, so I want to find that value of S. So I want the equation that doesn't have T, which is the fifth one again. So V squared, which is 0 squared, is equal to U squared, which is that squared. So 28 lots of root 15 over 15. OK, square that. And I get 784 over 15. OK, so that's the uh, uh, u squared plus 2 lots of as. So take away, so 2 lots of 9.8 is 19.6s. Uh, 
So if we add the 19.6s to both sides, then divide both sides by 19.6, 784 over 15 divided by 19.6 is 8 thirds. So approximately 2.7 metres. OK, so what is the greatest height that A reaches? So maximum height. Well, it starts off 8 metres above the ground. When B hits the ground, A is another 8, has travelled another 8 metres. And then A is flying up under its own uh, momentum, and it travels a further 2.7 metres, so 8 thirds. So 8 plus 8 plus 8 thirds is 56 thirds metres which is 18.6666, so 19 metres to 2 sig fig. OK, that's our final answer. Now, the assumption that we've made in order to answer that question, hopefully you guessed it as we worked our way through, was the fact that we assumed that A had enough space so that it wouldn't hit the peg, so it could travel up far enough where it wouldn't hit the peg or the pulley. OK? So unless, if that wasn't the case, I mean, if my diagram was accurate, for example, then A would hit the pulley, and obviously our calculations would be incorrect, OK, up to that point, uh, beyond that point. OK, so that's how we can deal with a bit of SUVAT in a pulley problem.